it's uh, it's just not what I like. I like the dry weather. <clears throat> Oh yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, all right. I'm just going to go for a real still shot. After a while, what I want to do is after we talk for a while, I'll, I'll move the camera. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then we'll start it like this. And if we have to stop for the long term air conditioning. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, um, let's, let's focus on Moab to begin with because I have to tie everybody together with how they feel about Moab. Okay. How long they've been here. Mm -hmm. What's kind of more about them and why they came in the first place. Okay. Free. Yeah, okay. All right. All right, you want me to just go ahead? And yeah, just oh, okay. All right. All right, we came to Moab um, just about 20 years ago now. Uh, we, we were on our way, my wife and I we, and two daughters were on our way up to uh, Salt Lake from Arizona, just on a trip. And uh, we came through Moab and saw this little um, A-frame that had uh, uh, five-acre five lots. So um, we don't usually stop in at those kind of things. I'm not much taken for advertising like that, but I thought, well, let's look anyway. So we went in, and the guy told us where it was, and he said it was 23 miles up the river, and I thought, oh, God, I'm not tonight, maybe tomorrow, and I don't know. So we got our motel, and it was such a beautiful, beautiful evening that we uh, decided to drive up the river and see. And the minute I topped up the top of um, um, Pace Hill, and came into the valley, and I said, just like Brigham Young said, uh, this is the place. <laughs> I could just picture my studio being here and, and uh, beautiful scenery and just, just what I wanted. And that's, that's um, mainly how we found the place. And we, the next day, I put money down on, um, we, we picked out a lot, put money down on the five acres, and uh, over a couple of years paid it off and then uh, decided to move in. But um, it's been very nice. Um, I love the weather here. It's just the greatest. Uh, the winters, once in a while we'll get a bad winter, but even that's not too bad. It's very dry, and um, the summers are like I like them, hot and dry. Um, I've made a lot of real good friends uh, in Moab and surrounding area, and um, um, just had a very nice time here. Is that? That's just for us. stories about Moab? I'm looking for weird stories, too. No, I you sure know, haven't. You know, sure haven't. You've heard that's like uh, these people down in Capitol Valley took me up to dinosaur tracks up in the mountains and took me yeah. out human footprints along the sides of them. No, I haven't heard that one. Yeah. <laughs> no. There's a bunch of weird stories around here. I'm no, I... Um, <clears throat> Well, they, they might be weird to somebody else. They're not <laughs> some of these weird things are pretty normal to Moab. <laughs> well, it, it, we have some strange people in Moab and and here, you know, you know, yeah. Well, Castle Valley is sort of known for its wackos. You know? <laughs>
<laughs> oh, it's kind of funny sometimes. <clears throat> Yeah, that there are well there's there's only there's only me. I've seen some of the work some of the other people do. And uh you know, they're not they're not what I consider artists, you know. They're like um high school artists, you know. Just some of the stuff they do is really gross <laughs> and, and strange. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I um I sometimes well, I so we sort of stay up here on the hill, and we don't have much to do with any of the other people. Um, I have one or two friends here in the valley, and that's about it. And um, the rest of the people, I just don't have anything to do with. In fact, most of them, no, I don't care for them. I won't have anything to do with them. You know, they say they stay clear of me. You know, a couple of them I've threatened. <laughs> Yeah, well, the um, animal husbandry, I, I took a cow poly. And because that's, that's what I did for years and years. I, I cowboyed. I worked on a lot of the big ranches and was foreman and assistant manager to some of them. And, and um, then decided that we, we, at that time, we had three boys. And uh, it was on the wages you made back in those days, you couldn't raise a family. So I had to find something else to do, you know. So I changed my profession a little bit. And um, then we had three girls, so six kids, you know. And um, it was, when we moved here, we had three girls in, in, in school. And um, uh, the boys were all married and gone. <clears throat> and slowly all the girls got married and they're all gone now. And we have, uh, our middle daughter is going to have twins. That's fact. That's where my wife went today, up there to see how she's doing, and um, that will give us twenty-six grandkids. <laughs> that's a pile of kids, isn't it? Twenty-six. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, all of them and my wife are all LDS, and um, I won't have anything to do with it. <laughs> I don't want anything to do with it. I'm a devout heathen. Yeah, I, um, I, I just, I just um, can't go along with it, and uh, uh, especially a church that won't even allow the father to come to his daughter's wedding because it's it's held in the temple and I'm not allowed in there. I'm unclean, I'm I'm a heathen, I'm a devil worshiper. <laughs> they won't let me in the doors, you know. So why do they let me in the gates at Temple Square, you know? <laughs> Actually, I could care less, but uh, I think that's pretty crappy, don't you? They won't even let you in to see your own daughter's wedding. And I hate them for it. And, and sons, too. I I wouldn't give them time of day. <laughs> One reason I'd kind of, I, I'd, I'd kind of hate to leave Moab, but I'd, um, I would love to move into Nevada. <clears throat> Nevada is one of the last, other than, you know, Alaska, one of the last of the 
frontier states in, in the whole United States because it's so not 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 southern not not down around Las Vegas but northern northern Nevada it's just miles and miles and nothing and that's so great this valley when we first moved here at night you you'd look out the window you'd see a light way down the valley there and maybe one down here and a couple up here that was it now it looks like you got them Las Vegas when you drive into it at night I mean the place is lit up and and you figure if there's a house on every five acres what it's going to be like and and some people want to be able to put more than they want to be able to split their lots and sell them and you know and you can start to imagine five houses on five acres oh. spooky <laughs> i mean first of all the the valley would never support it we, we we're starting to have a problem with um uh, hepatitis in um, in the water, and you know because of everybody's on septic tank, and the water is close to the surface down in the valley, and um, you know it's not a healthy situation. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, is this still on? <laughs> oh, okay. This actually changed my How did I get in? Um, God only knows. <laughs> I think sometimes it's a curse. Um, it, it's terribly fr frustrating. Um, it's not easy. Everybody thinks you just sit down and, oh, how long did it take you to do this? You know, and they, they think I probably did this in, in a day and a half or something. But there's a tremendous amount of work that goes into painting. Um, the, um, well, what was the question? Oh, okay. All right. Um, you can cut this out, or yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> oh, okay. Well, sometimes it just helps me lead one thing into another. Um, yeah. People will ask me how long it takes to do a painting like this. This is a 18 by 36. Um, I used to work on a ranch in Texas that still used the uh, chuck wagon, and uh, it's it's an experience. Um, um, there aren't many left. Uh, many of the chuck wagons today are motorized, pulled by something else, you know, a, a pickup truck, or some of them have pickup trucks with a chuck wagon in the back of them. But this this was drawn by uh, six mules, and um, it was in the Panhandle country in Texas, and um, we we lived on that wagon. Um, we s slept out, and um, in in order to paint something like this, you have to know a little bit. You can't just read it in a book and, and say, oh, I'm going to do a painting of it. You, you have to feel it. You have to know what it's like. Um, and um, I, I, I start out with um, uh, with an idea, and I'll, I'll make variations of that uh, of the of my idea. But funny enough, I usually come back to the original thought I had. It's usually I, I don't have to go any further than than what I thought about first. Some people will make little thumbnail sketches and they'll, they'll, they'll take the, the picture from different angles. Whereas usually I come back to my a very original thought. I, that's the one that hits me, the, the one I like the best. 
Then um, I'll, I'll start doing my uh, my drawing. I'll, like on this, I, I start out with a basic wagon, and um, how the fly is going to be. This this is called the fly, and um, it it keeps out the the sun and the rain, and the weather, and and very often they'll have other other canvases that they can attach to these points here on the sides in cold weather and when it gets real windy. Um, it helps keep a little warmth inside from the fires. But um, the, uh, in this case, the, um, the cook, he's looking, um, it's dinner time. In fact, this painting is called uh, Bon Appetit. <laughs> and uh, the, the cook uh, is looking back here, and all the writers are starting to come in. And they're going to eat him out of house and home, probably, because uh, I know we used to. We used to have uh, uh, usually steak and beans and potatoes and some kind of a cobbler and good, good coffee. Coffee like you can't get anywhere else. And um, um, sometime, sometime pie. Sometime we have pie um, if he had time. And usually it was like that three times a day. In the morning you had steak and eggs. In the evening you had steak again or stew or something. I mean, you were always well fed, well fed. A happy cowboy is one with a full stomach. <laughs> but anyway, I, I like to do these, these kind of things that uh, show what uh, real cowboy life was like. Uh, it gets so distorted in the movies and, and uh, some other... Some other painters make it a little more than what it is, a little. But it's um, it's it's a life that's uh, going, and I was um, happy and proud to be a part of it, and and uh, try to whenever I can now. It's um, it's a uh, it's um, a real American American character. I know whenever I travel or or meet people, especially those people from Europe, which we get a lot of in in Moab. English, German, French, Italian. Um, they, they, they see me, and all of a sudden they stand there with their mouth open. You know, <laughs> a real cowboy. You know, and uh, it's 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 nice. To, it makes me feel very proud that uh, that I was had something to do with that. But um, anyway, um, getting onto some other paintings, which we'll probably look at later. Um, I um, I do miniatures, um, anything from uh, all three by four inches on up to um, um, six feet, four feet by six feet. So I have a variety of sizes, and um, I um, have a show every um, every winter in uh, Vail, Colorado where um, probably most the uh, majority of my work goes. And I have uh, three galleries in uh, North, Ca North Carolina, South Carolina that handle my work. And um, one in California and um, one in Salt Lake. <coughs> uh, one is in Germantown, uh, which is up near Winston-Salem in North Carolina. The other one is, uh, they're, they're all owned by the same guy. Uh, one is in uh, Charleston, South Carolina, and the other one is in um, Columbia, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. yep. oh, My father, well, he was quite a guy. Um, these days you, you hear about fathers that aren't too well thought of by their kids, you know. But uh, my, I was an only child. My uh, father immigrated from England. He wanted to get out of there. He didn't like it at all. Um, the, um, he came to Florida and worked on the Tamiami Trail, the, the original link between Miami and uh, Tampa. And um, sent from my mother um, after he'd been over here a while. And um, they got married when uh, they got off the she, when she got off the boat in Tampa. They um, they got married, had been married when I guess it was over over 50 years I guess. And um, mother died of Alzheimer's, 
um, a couple of years ago. And my dad died of, um, I think, heartbreak from mother having Alzheimer's. He just got to where he didn't care anymore. Um, he kept thinking that she would get over it, and I kept telling him it won't happen. It's just going to get worse. But um, fortunately, he went first, so he didn't have to see how bad it really got. And we, we took care of mother right, right here in the house up to the night she died. And um, boy, you talk about a tough disease to, to deal with. Um, it's, for, for, for the patient, it's nothing because uh, they don't know what's going on. But for the, the caretakers, it's tough, I'll tell you. Real tough. And my, my, my mother had left her body. The person I knew was my mother had left her body a long time. We were taking care of, of a thing. I know that's a terrible way to talk about your parents, but that's what it was, exactly what it was. And it was all, it was a blessing when she, when she finally died, you know. And they're both buried together down in um, uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, he and, uh, well, when I was in kindergarten, or even before that, I, I had a fascination for drawing. And um, Dad, I, I, many times I wanted to copy things, copy from, you know, to draw. He didn't like that. Now, nowadays, if I had a, a kid that wanted to draw, I'd say copy anything you want, anything that helps you. But Dad, he didn't, he didn't want me to copy. And that kind of held me back. But uh, I was still the one called on at Christmas to do all the Santa Claus stuff in, in colored chalk on the, uh, on the blackboards in school and, and Easter and Thanksgiving and drawing turkeys and all that stuff, you know. And <laughs> um, it, um, I never really thought I'd end up doing this for a living. Um, it's, it's been a privilege. Um, it's it's not easy, and I don't mean easy in in the fact that the painting part. It. It's uh, it's a tough way to make a living. Um, right now, um, there's sort of a, people are holding off on the money they're spending, um, and the first place they hold off on is something that they really can live without or don't have just have to have. And a painting hanging on the wall is something they can do without for a while. They have to have their car engine fixed or, you know, new, new room on the house or a new baby coming or something. So they, they hold off on that. So those kind of things always hurt all the artists first. We're sort of on the, the head of the line when it comes to getting bashed. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know exactly. Yeah. Huh. Especially in this country. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Um, Becker. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I'm glad we're not government subsidized because, um, I mean, I personally, um, because if we were, then they'd start to tell us what to paint, how to paint it, and what color to use, and I don't go for that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's right. I've never, never had the use of a grant, and I don't ever intend to. Yeah, I just don't like the restrictions they start to put on you. That's um, if 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 I couldn't paint when I wanted, you know, it, I I think I'd quit. I really would. What about your dad as an artist? Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Dad was um. um he, he was never a full-time working artist. He, he did it as, as a, a pastime, a hobby, if you want to say. And, um, but he, he, was, he was good. He was really, pen and ink was, was his thing. He could do pen and inks and make them look like black and white photographs. And 
Um, that's that's what he was known for. In fact, they, they did an article. There was a magazine called um, Pencil Points. I believe that's what it was called. And I don't even know if it's still in existence. But uh, they did an article on him. In fact, one of his pen and inks was on the, um, on the cover. And they said people do this because they love to do it, not because they're getting paid for it. And, of course, that's the way I feel about what I do. Um, the, um, he, he was never, he tried to get into oil painting and, and uh, he could never quite get what he wanted and he was really frustrated. And when, when I started painting, he, he envied me for what I could do with, with paint and color. But um, he, he just never had the patience to work with it. But I look at his pen and inks and I think the patience it took to do those uh, all the shading done with little tiny dots. Um, I mean, that takes hours. <laughs> and I've, I've seen how he worked. And um, no, no magnifying glass. Um, just take hours and hours to do one little section of a piece. And, and if, if you drop too much ink on one, you'd start all over. Just a big mess. But um, he, he never really got into it other than just doing it because he liked to and as a hobby, you know. In fact, I don't even really consider it a hobby because he, he just didn't do that much. And if he had, gosh only knows where he would have gone, you know. My collectibles. Um, I've, I've given away stuff that is to friends of mine that are now worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars and I kick myself for ever doing it. Never thinking that someday all the stuff that I used to use uh, every day would, would become very valuable. But um, I've, I've always, I've, I've loved the, the workmanship of uh, um, spurs and bits and especially the silver inlay work. Um, I've got um, I've got 12, 12 pairs of spurs that are real collector items. Um, I've got some very nice bits. I collect shamps. Um, um, anything, any um, any cowboy gear, and a lot of it um, is stuff that I had that I used to use myself, and um, a lot of it's things I've traded and and. Um, with other people for, and some a lot of things have been given to me. But uh, yeah, they're um, they're quite collectible, and they're I have I even hate to say how much some of the stuff is worth now. And I, of course, I have a, a library that uh, my research library that is um, ma many of the books in here are, are have become collectible items. Um, a lot of them are autographed. Um, by the authors, and uh, um, even some of the uh, old magazines um, that were originally worth um, oh three or four dollars a copy, uh, a couple of my issues are now worth uh, over sixty, seventy dollars a piece. <laughs> so I, I hang on to this stuff. early, early horses, um, and they're slowly breeding them back again. And um, I can't remember what they're called. They uh, pop, sort of a Polish name, Polanski horses or something like that. They're, they, they look, um, they're, they're not a, a big horse. They're, they're small. They almost look like um, some of the horses you see in, the, um, um, in China and uh, uh, Mongolia. Um, they're, they're funny looking little horses. 